Well, welcome back to Around the Museum with Joe and Diane, where it's just started raining and it's probably going to get heavier, so we'll have to head in very shortly. But we've spent the last two weeks filming stuff around the museum. We we've had a great time doing it. We have and there's indeed. There's probably another ten episodes that we could have filmed as we'd have carried on around, um, but we just simply don't have well, the time. Maybe some other time. Maybe some other time. But what we thought we'd do to kind of finish everything off is very quickly, before it rains even harder, head inside and give you a full tour around the museum. Because when we started, it was, well, a mess. <laughs> <laughs> in the nicest uh, way can, possible. You could put it that way. Yes. <laughs> we uh, have had a wonderful team of volunteers over the last two weeks working tirelessly to get it ready for the open day, which happened yesterday, mm -hmm. and it went very it, well. It went brilliantly. And yes. of course, by the time that this episode goes out, who knows what we've done in that time. It may even be after Christmas. It probably will be, in fact. In fact, it's probably quite funny because I think we'll put yeah. these episodes out every couple of weeks, so it may be middle of next year. Yeah. But yes. who knows what yeah. the museum uh, will have done in that time. But we thought now to preserve this, we'll give you a bit of a tour around the museum and show you a bit about what's yeah. uh, the future vision for it as it goes. So, yes, I mean, for starters, we're going to have a, a great big sign up there, yes. which uh, properly yes. promotes yeah. us instead of the, uh, the old boards of wood that you can see but you can see Creation Research Centre coming soon. Um, yes. Creation Research Centre where dragons praise the Lord yes. and of course this comes straight out of the Psalms where it says praise the Lord from the earth yes. you great dragons and if you come inside and get out of the cold Diane. Yes. You oh can well we're see... British we don't mind a bit well, of rain. Well, yes, indeed. Yes. Um, <laughs> we've right. got Yes. A dinosaur dragon mm. right here, yes. and refer back to our dragon mm. episode. Yeah. But uh, come on in, yes. Diane, and as mm. people come in, they're going to be mm. confronted straight away by this giant T Rex head. So, why don't you take the camera over there and uh, tell us what's going on with this giant T Rex? Because people are going to come in this way and they're going to see. I mean, we've got animals, this is a new addition, we've yes. got great big fossils, oh, great yes. big T Rex mm. head. This is going to be always be a free part of the museum, yes, it will. This is where you're uh, welcomed. Uh, he may not seem very welcoming, <laughs> but, uh, but at the same time, he's a great photo opportunity, Absolutely. so we welcome people. So people yes. will be able to come in here and there'll always be some stuff around here by the welcome desk, whether it be the giant Mosasaurus uh, skull down behind you, Diane, there's some dinosaur eggs there. We've got mm. some stromatolites and dinosaur footprints. We've got Jaws, um, who we've just uh, rescued and we've got a whole set up here. We're going to get a waterfall in place tomorrow and we've got heat lamps and stuff coming. So there'll be, we really want to have a sort of an animal environment here, you know, where we can have some of these mm. um, wildlife stuff going on here. Yeah, it's and nice to have a few live things to, amongst all these exactly, dead things. Exactly, it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be great. <laughs> and then as people come out this way, now at the moment, Diane, hidden behind this great big wall here, uh, which we had set up for the open day, what's going to be behind here? Because at the moment it's just mm. full of stuff that we had to hide yes. <laughs> for the open day. Yes. So what's behind here going to be? Well, that area will be for ongoing research because there's still a lot of research to do. We've mm -hmm. got thousands of fossils that need to be properly investigated and some of them need some further processing in terms of just cleaning up so that you can see the details some more and hopefully we'll acquire some more. So uh, we'll have an area where people can see what's involved mm. in actually getting exhibits ready for going on display and also how we uh, research them in terms of what we can find out from this particular fossil, yeah. see that actually happening. And actually mm. do experiments and because yes. and the whole point mm. of this centre is that it is a centre, right? It's a, it's a centre yes. for creation mm. research. We have got the museum which is predominantly upstairs but mm. it's so much more than just a museum, it is active research that mm. will be going on here, whether it be the stalactite machines, whether it be yes, be duplicating. great to have one of those. Absolutely. <laughs> duplicating yes. stuff that yes. you've done at Creation Research in Australia and yes. all this kind mm. of stuff that we want to be able to do but it's mm. it's just so much more than just a museum and as we were talking yesterday at the open day really as Christians we're called to do two things we're called to preach the gospel Yes. and we're called to make disciples yes. and really that's what we want this centre to be about we want it to be an evangelistic opportunity so there's already loads of interest oh. from the local people yes. you see people walking past the door and peering in and in wanting to you know yes, what's going on right. and popping mm. in and having a look yes. so we want to make sure that everybody who comes in off the streets whether they want to come and see the dinosaurs whether they want to buy fossils whether they want to explore the museum and see some pretty yes. world-class exhibits really mm. we want to make sure that they get the gospel we're not called to make converts that's the spirit's work we're called to preach the gospel well once people have accepted the gospel we're then told to go out and make 
disciples. disciples. Yes. So we want to make mm. this center an opportunity for discipleship, an opportunity mm. to strengthen people's faith, an opportunity to provide the answers to the questions that these Christians are going to get asked, an opportunity mm. to do research which praises the Lord and actually declares his glory in everything that we do. We want to have an opportunity to bring interns into the museum and train them in apologetics and train them even in things like how to study the Bible. Yes. Um, how to study the Bible for teaching, how to understand good hermeneutics. Really, it's so much more than just the creation message. Yes, it's not just about creation versus evolution. This is to show the manifest works of the Lord, which is another verse from the Psalms, about how we see in the real world the ac actions of the God of the real world and how we can stand firm on our ground when we stand firm on the scriptures. Mm. And uh, quite often, if we stand firm on the scriptures about some things that are unknown quantities, the secular scientists will catch up with us. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we've seen that happen a few times with some of the examples we've got here. Yeah. Mm. It's so much more than just mm. a normal museum. It's so much more than just creation versus evolution. It's getting the big picture. And, you know, mm. we're not just a creation ministry, uh, we, as in we don't just focus on the creation. It's about mm. a biblical worldview. It's about yes. taking the mm. whole of the Bible in context. It's about applying the whole of the Bible to our life and to the world which God has created. So the Psalms also tell us that it is beautiful. It's a great thing to study the works of the Lord and those who study the works of the Lord will delight in it. And of course, the works of the Lord include salvation. They yes. include the holding of the whole world together, but they also include the creation of the world. They include the judgment of the world in Noah's flood and the promise to judge the world once again, which is where the gospel comes in. Yes, indeed. And yes. we need to make sure that we're preaching <laughs> the gospel. So the whole plan of the centre is to be so much more than just a museum. Mm. It's going to be a place which is an evangelistic opportunity, a place to strengthen local churches, a place to provide answers to Christians, a place that we can develop projects and send out around the country. And so the centre of research, which will be behind here, or the Creation Research mm. Centre, will be a very pivotal part of that. So as we come on down here, Diane, we can actually see we've got mm. some of our uh, yes. uh, first kinds mm. of exhibits. So we've got our tights and mites stuff, and we've got this cabinet as well, which has got some of our more spectacular things, which I don't think mm. we've pointed out in our series. Mm. Down at the bottom here, you can see a whole assemblage of mm. Mosasaurus-type um, creatures, the big, the big swimming dinosaurs, yes. as mm. they're often called, or the big marine reptiles. You've got, oh, what have we got here? Look, we've got ribs and vertebrae and limb and all mm. sorts of stuff. Yes, yes, and sort of mix of bones all stuck together there, yes. And then further up here, we've <laughs> mm. got this mass assemblage yes. of uh, shells and bellum knights, so mm. rapid yes. burial. Rapid burial. Burial in yes. a flooding environment, in, pointing yes, all the same that's way. Right. Mm. And I'm particularly uh, keen about this fossil here. In fact, uh, well, it's got a funny story. We've got yes. uh, one of our trustees in the UK and one of our helpers, um, uh, David, actually resided in, in Germany for a while. Yes. And I know that John mm. often went out there and dug yes, in places like mm. the Mulnheim and the Solnhofen yes. and mm. Messel and yes. places like that. And um, he actually was helping us to sort out ready for the open day, wasn't he? And he brought us up in a big box. And he said, this was left by John Mackay the last time he was here in Germany. And uh, we, he's moved, mm. David's moved back to the UK now. So he said, I brought it up here. So we opened it up and it was some books and DVDs yes. and some of John's clothes and, you know, the odd, the odd yes. tool and stuff. And yeah. so nothing too exciting. But at the bottom, we found this, which yes. is one of the most spectacular fossils I think we've ever yeah. seen. So uh, what are we looking at here, Diane, this, this fossil this here? This is a plant. This yeah. is uh, part of a southern pine or an auricaria pine. Okay. Now, that is a pine tree that does grow today, but not in Germany. No, it's, it it's only it's southern, grows in so, the southern hemisphere. So in Australia? So it does grow in Australia. Right, so it's a living yes. fossil, that's first. That's classic living fossil. Okay, yes. so it hasn't changed in 200 odd million years, yes. as, as how yes, all these rocks are supposed right. to be. And then over here, what do we have here, this curly whirly oh, fossil? Oh, we have a lovely ammonite, beautiful sea creature. As, as extinct as far as extinct, we know. Yes. So mm. what we have is a living fossil, so no evidence of evolution here. No. As long as Oricaria have been <laughs> around, they've been reproducing after their own kind, just like God told them to. In fact, mm. even ammonites are evidence of after their kind because they appear in the fossil record from nowhere up until the point where they go extinct in the fossil yeah. record, they don't change. That's right. Wherever you find them, they're very clearly ammonites. Ammonites. No change, yes. no evolution at all. But also, it's got an important thing about a, a flood evidence because you've actually got evidence of a land plant mm. and sea creature buried right next to each other. And whenever you find those together, you have... 
evidence you have of a flood. Ev evidence of a flood because it's a flooded uh, environment. Oracaria pines certainly do not grow in the sea. No. They don't like having wet feet. They certainly don't like having seawater in them. <laughs> so what you've got here is something has swept across the land, picked up whatever has been Rinded in its path, and, and later on it it's down. dumped yeah. it and buried it. As so great evidence. Well worth is. digging through John's underpants to find, but there we go. And also as we come along, we've got uh, lots of books and DVDs for sale in our site, and I just knocked that one down. But yeah. the books cry out is something that's really important to me. You see, my yes. parents, yeah. um, well, they both came yeah. from non-Christian backgrounds. In fact, Dad was an atheist before he became a Christian. Yes. Hated God, hated everything to do oh, with God. Yeah. Mm. But his biggest issue, his biggest reason was, what do I do about things like, you know, the fossils? Yes. What about do I do about the dinosaurs? Common objections. And when he became mm. a Christian, unfortunately, the church he started going to told him that Satan mm. created the dinosaurs. Mm. So for four years of my life, I had nothing to do with dinosaurs. I've yes. been taking revenge ever since because we're going <laughs> yes. to dig the things up now. I've heard that theory. But I was... So, yes. uh, Mm. Taken along on field trips, secular mm. field trips, where I was told, don't listen to the lady mm. in charge, you know, they'll just tell you lies, just learn how to find fossils, right? Mm. Um, and I th always thought it was a sad thing because you could mm. get great big books about the Grand Canyon, books yes. about Mount St. Helens, mm. books about the Three Sisters in Australia and all this kind yes. of stuff and mm. nothing about the local thing. So what we decided to do was produce our own local ones. So we've mm. called them The Rocks Cry Out. There's a free mm. video that goes with it at therockscryout.co.uk or on our Creation yes. Research um, yes. uh, YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah. But the whole point of this is that really it helps you to have your own field trip. Mm. Um, so this is one to Charmer than Black Ven where we've recently done a convention to, haven't we? Yeah. So as you open it up, it's yeah. got an introduction, it's got maps, so it tells you how to get there, exactly where to park, which is in the practical, what you need to bring, where you need to go, how to get down there. The big picture takes you step by step through the geology uh, and how to find fossils, what fossils to find, fossil hunting, a bit of the history, some of the evidence that you can find. At the back, we have an in-depth section, which goes deeper into the details of um, a specific aspect yes. of it. So this mm. talks about the history of evolution, or we talk about missing time and strata and stuff like that. Mm. And if you find lots of fossils, all this is referenced, by the way, with notes and, and extra uh, mm. places that you can dig through and find more information. But at the back, you have a fossil ID guide, which will help you to identify your fossils that come from uh, the, the area where it was digging up. So uh, a real great book, a real great set of programs. We've got four in the series. We've got two more on the way. We want to produce yes, more and more as right. we travel around. Yeah. So continue to uh, support Creation Research and get these books because they're yeah. a real valuable thing to have. Yes, we want people to be able to trust their own observations mm. and learn how to put them in the right context. Go and do the research that's been done. Build on the research that's yeah. been done. Be part of it. Be part of knowing more about God's world. And their observations do count just as much as the mm. professional scientists. Absolutely, do. yeah. Mm. Um, so I've got more of the Titan mites over here. Yes. But if you come this way, mm. past the dinosaur, Diane, um, you, we actually get into our creation research store, our shop, yes. uh, where not only mm. can you get stuff like books and DVDs, mm. and you can get all these online as well in the UK. Yes, a lot of these are now available as MP4 downloads mm -hmm. uh, rather than physical um, D DVDs. So this content is still available and even if you can't come here. You can stream yeah. it as well. We are still yes. developing mm. our streaming site, but it is accessible now, so you can stream these things. Uh, you don't have to just get the DVDs, although if you do want... People still like to have the hard copy of the yes, DVD because they, they can give them to other people yes, and pass them around right. and stuff. Mm. But they are available as streaming as well, and mm. we're continuing to develop that. Uh, and obviously on mm. our YouTube channel, there's yes. plenty of content there as well that you can do. And we're redoing a lot of these DVDs and this content Content. But here at the store, it's designed to be a place where you can come and get your own resources, whether they be mm. some of the fabulous books that you can see, some of the DVDs, or the fossils. We have lots of fossils on for we sale have, here. That's right. And fossils are a really good thing to have because they are a great conversation mm -hmm. starter. People like fossils. So have a few fossils in your living room on your coffee table. Great way to talk about the Lord, great way to talk about um, the Creator mm -hmm. and uh, who is also the Judge and Saviour. Great way to get people interested. So 
And you can actually use these mm. as evidence to mm. show people, you know, I mean, like, for instance, if you bought a great big column of Orthoceras, which mm. you'll see our giant sculpture of in a moment, yes. um, mm. you can sh talk about how all of these animals mm. got washed into position in flowing yes. water. If you mm. get a, a, a piece of evidence from the Jurassic Coast where you have fossil wood next to the fossil ammonites, just mm. like we have the tree next to the ammonite from Germany, yes. this is a UK example, though, mm. it's a great opportunity to be able to talk about this. And many of these... I mean, there's a huge bit of wood on mm. the back there. And many of these have excellent opportunities to be able to put on display. They look really cool, they look do, really do. pretty, yeah. oh, but yes. you can actually mm. use them to talk about evidence mm. of God's creation, yes. evidence of Noah's flood, evidence mm. that the Bible is true, mm. all of these yes, things. That's right. So whether mm. it's fossils, whether it's dinosaur teeth, whether it's beautiful things like these fabulous Nautiluses oh, are, that we have oh, for sale. These are delightful, aren't they? Yes. Absolutely mm. gorgeous. So these are wonderful example of design and creation. People like that as well. And they look really mm. pretty as well. And they're very attractive, so they're sure to attract people's attention. Absolutely. Mm. And uh, many of the fossils are at a, a very reasonable price as well. So you they're can... very reasonably <laughs> priced. <laughs> so you can come and actually collect some of your mm. own uh, yes. evidence. Mm. Um, come and see the fossils. We're going to be building this up, not only online, but also on like Facebook pages and stuff yes. like that. But you can mm. actually come and collect evidence for yourself. And then we move around here, Diane, where uh, we have some, some more evidence on display. Things like polystrate belemnites, things mm. like the mass fish fossils that are, yes. that are fa so fantastic. Mm. Many of these are actually UK examples or things that we yes. use to compare mm. with other examples around the world. And then we get to our witness t-shirts, which are, are pretty, pretty cool looking. Have a look at this. You can witness, you can give people yes. the gospel just by wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> yes, that's right. This is uh, using a, an iconic illustration that's done the rounds of the internet and oh, yes. uh, lots of places of the picture of human evolution from ape-like creature walking along on four, all fours to a human being. And it cements in the mind people's idea that, oh yes, we were overgrown, uh, evolved apes. Mm -hmm. um, but in fact, the Bible tells us, no, human beings have never been a associated with any other animal. The first man was made out of raw material, so no physical connection whatsoever between human beings and animals. And so this is a way of making that point in a sort of funny, quirky way. <laughs> Stop following me. We're yes. not related. God created man in his yes. own image. So these are for sale and they'll be available online as well. But that's yes. the idea of this being a resource centre, a place where mm. you can buy books, DVDs, fossils, mm. really get to grips with God's creation mm. through the resources that creation research produce. And then if we come around here, we've already mentioned some of these giant macro fossils, but the idea yes. is that mm. that will be the research part of it that will mm. be the sale part of it this is the museum so however mm. we do it whether it's by donations or tickets or whatever mm. it happens this will be always a little bit down here but mm. most of the museum will be upstairs so yes. people will be able to come mm. and see things like the beautiful fossils that we mentioned mm. earlier the giant ammonites and out the back here diane we have a courtyard yes we do at the moment it's all full of all sorts of um <laughs> Uh, stuff. stuff. Yes, yeah. Yeah, we won't be, call to, it junk, but polite. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, in the end, um, we can have some living things amongst all of uh -huh. these dead things, and so we can make a, a really nice conservatory sort of yeah. area. We want a sort yes. of glass mm. roof on the top, you know, letting lots <laughs> yes. of light, nice mm. and warm, a bit more tropical yes. feel, some mm. giant tree ferns, some living creatures, ammonites, yeah. uh, ammonites no, uh, no, or carrier plants, yeah. tree ferns, things yes. like that. Um, mm. So, uh, and snakes and bugs and beetles. <laughs> and all sorts of cool stuff yes. on display. So we're really looking forward to getting that sort of un underway mm. and, and set up. We have offices for our staff and uh, research areas out the mm. back there. So that's really exciting. But all of this is really bringing you this way. And so once you're inside mm. this area, you're now truly inside the museum part. Mm. And that's where we lead upstairs. So come upstairs yes. with us. Mm. Because we've got these wonderful wide sweeping stairs. We've uh, had many of these things donated to us, not just mm. the fossils, but also the display cases. This was mm. donated to us just 
a couple of days ago, wasn't yes, it? Perfect right. for going on the stairs it's and perfect for having there. all yes. of our mm. Holy Land pottery inside. Mm. Um, we've got so much archaeology mm. in our museum collection yes. now. It's just yes, absolutely yes. amazing. Mm. And so that brings you upstairs to the museum proper. Now at the moment, we're still set up as we were for our open day. So everything is kind of spread out around the edges. But eventually what we want to do is clear all these chairs that are in the middle, have this whole area as a museum mm. set up. Yes. But also, Diane, at Jurassic you have some rather fantastic technology which you use, uh, things like virtual reality and stuff like that. So yes. we're going to be trying to harness that idea here at the yes, museum? Yes, we can add that so that uh, it can be even more visual Absolutely. than seeing these things here. And yes. the idea is that the museum will eventually be a self-touring thing, so you don't need me or Diane to take you round. The idea is that we're able to actually have things like, what do you call them, QR codes or yes, pictures right. or stuff like that which you can pull your phone out, yeah. take a scan, and it comes to life. And it's Diane talking, or it's me talking, or it tells you more information about the fossils and really takes you through a self-guided tour around the museum, giving you a much, much bigger perspective mm. of what these fossils and artifacts actually show. So it saves room, having to put yes. up signs and everything, <laughs> but right. it also gives you more information. That's right. In a much so more accessible get, way. You get more than what's actually here physically. Absolutely, yeah. Yes. yeah. So it really is uh, a, a really brilliant new piece of technology um, that we're mm. wanting to harness eventually. And again, it needs your help, whether it be graphic designers or media people or people who can work this out. We need your help to be able to pull all of this together. And so you come around, we have our marine exhibition here. We have all of our Roman stuff, uh, much of it from the time of Jesus. And then we just mm. start to kind of carry on around the museum. Some some of the stuff that you've already seen in our walkabout. We've got dinosaurs, giant, um, giant ammonites here. In fact, this wasn't here when we did our living fossils display. I mean, we've got it all no, set no, up now. Isn't. And there's yes. even more living fossils than what we talked about. Lovely yes. coelacanth fossil mm. here, which yes. I think is fantastic. Um, mm. I think we, we briefly mentioned the, uh, mention the, the, the coelacanth fish, but we've actually found our, found our fossil now. Beautiful mm. horseshoe crab, yes. which uh, is, is mm. just stunning. The razor fishes, the classic, of course, uh, nautiluses, mm. and many other examples as well. Really beautiful. Uh, more living fossils as you come around here. We discuss things like human evolution, We've going into after the flood, which we haven't had time to do, but I wanted to. The discussion, Diane, about how the whole concept of good to bad to worse yeah. is creatures uh, that were created in perfection, fell at the time of mankind fell, the world had changed from good to bad, and then as a result of Noah's flood, the world changed from bad to worse. And so what we have here are a load of what we refer to as the post-flood animals, mm. um, things like giant rhinos and woolly mammoths and stuff like that, which they show starting signs of adaptation and change to survive in a colder climate. Oh yes, those things are real processes. Now they won't make anything evolve. Mm. They only enable things to survive if they already have the potential for uh, developing those structures. So a thicker coat, you have to have a furry coat to start mm. with. Some creatures have the potential for growing a much more thicker coat, so they'll survive in a colder climate. That's not evolution. That is adaptation. It's a real process. It's a real biological process, but it's not going to make anything evolve. No, so when you're dealing with a great big mammoth uh, bone mm. or something like that, you know that it's been an adapted for a colder climate, but it's yes. not the same as evolution. It's the result of the fall of mankind. Mm. And then we carry on round. We've got our good to bad to worst table where we talk. Well, we've already spoken about thorns, but I mean, club mm. mosses are tiny little things nowadays. Yes. Yet this is the root of a club moss tree. Yes, there were that's enormous right. things in the past. <laughs> Yes, in the past you would have needed a crane to lift a, an entire club moss. Now today they're, they're spindly, they're spindly little, little, things. little things. Yes. We have our not mm. time but process table mm. where we talk about rapid burial. We have our mixed environment table where just like those uh, fossils downstairs, mm. Diane, look, you've got the curly whirly ammonites next to the wood. So you're definitely looking at evidence mm. of a flood. I mean, we have about 25,000 fossils and artifacts in this collection mm. and this all needs organising. Yes, it All does. needs cataloguing, it all needs sorting yes. out. So mm. we really do need your help and support in this. So come and help volunteer. Yes. Support us financially if you can. It's, I mean, you're going back soon, but we're hoping that you're coming back again. Yes, I'm well, hoping to come back. We can't have Diane yes. here the whole time. So <laughs> we do need your help uh, mm. to be able to do all of this. So let's just do this last little bit, Diane, uh, as yes. we move on, because mm. 
we then go on to the uh, archaeological side of things, which we do have an episode about the archaeological side of things, but really there's so much mm. more that we could yes. have spoken about. Oh, yes. um, we just had to give you a little bit of a, a mm. sneak peek. So we have things like our stone tools. Not primitive. No, not primitive at all. You have to be highly intelligent and very capable and very creative to make a good stone tool. Mm. It's a really... Uh, uh, difficult mm. and, and thing to do to, get, to mm. get it right and even you go one step further because many of these tools are actually only designed to be held in your left or your right hand and you'll find they've got mm. little bulbs which yes. mean that you hold them so they're, they're, they're just mm. right you know so really um, this isn't a, a primitive thing this is a really mm. technical thing to do yeah, and we have Neanderthal tools we can talk about Neanderthals and mm. so on and so forth and then we come this way Diane and this is one thing we didn't spend a lot of time with, but it's the, it's the archaeology, it's the yes. Holy Land pottery, mm. it's the ancient Chinese cultures that mm. even have the story of creation woven into their yes, uh, language. Mm. And really spectacular archaeology, which is all about bringing history and bringing the Bible to life. Yes. yes, we want people to understand that the Bible is the real history of the real world. So it's not just about creation versus evolution. Mm. We have creation, the fall, the flood. We have ancient history. Remember, Jesus lived in Roman times. Mm. The uh, ancient kings and ancient leaders of Egypt interacted with people from Egypt, from Assyria, from the uh, surrounding the Hittites uh, Middle Eastern and all these peoples. people so cultures. It's really good to be able to put that all into context so that people can see mm. that the Bible can be trusted as the real history of the real world. And we talk about stuff like biblical mm. archaeology and many people when they hear biblical archaeology think archaeology of the Bible lands. Mm. And some people will think things like Holy Land, Israel, yes. and other mm. people will think well actually Bible lands went a bit further than that because the Bible talks about Assyria and yes. Babylon. And then some people were, well, actually, in the New Testament, you've got Greece and yes, Rome and the Paul traveled there. Mm. But the reality is, biblical archaeology, true biblical archaeology, yes. is, well, the Bible talks about the history of people from beginning all the way right to the to end. The very end, yes. It's the real history of all the people. whole world. And at <laughs> yes. the end, mm. worshipping Christ, there will be all tribes yes. and all mm. tongues and all nations. People yes. from all these places mm. will be worshipping God as their Lord and Saviour. And mm. so the reality is, biblical archaeology, biblical yes. human history is mm. all of history, all yes, of archaeology indeed. from mm. a biblical perspective. And so when you come mm. over here and say, well, what on earth has a Anglo-Saxon sax got to do with anything? This is the, the short sword right that yes. the, the Saxons mm. were named after what's mm. that got to do with biblical history what's that got to do with biblical archaeology well there's a fabulous book that we sell down in the shop yes, and on our website right. called mm. after the flood and it's where mm. Bill Cooper Dr Bill Cooper traces back the Anglo-Saxon kings all the way back to Noah because yeah. they believed they were descended from Noah. They and the, the yeah. Greeks believed they were descended from Noah as well. They just called mm. him somebody different. So really, what we're trying to push is biblical archaeology in the truest sense, which is all of history, all of archaeology, but from a biblical perspective. So fabulous um, artefacts, fabulous history, mm. great big things that really sort of hone into that Biblical perspective, Neolithic, um, Chinese stuff, cultures from all over the world, Peru, um, Holy Land pots. Uh, we've got our entire Egyptians. I love our Egyptian stuff. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, Canaiform tablets, many of which have been translated. And of course, we have our specific biblical archaeology, uh, you know, the Holy Land archaeology stuff, which specific biblical references like Hezekiah's um, pots and cuneiform tablets that talk about Nebuchadnezzar and uh, amphora that were found on a shipwreck off the coast, Roman amphora that were found on a, ship a shipwreck off the coast of Malta, so Apostle Paul connection yes, and all this kind right. of stuff yeah. is absolutely fabulous. So Diane, just to conclude, just to finish, why is all of this important? Why have we gone at Creation Research to such lengths to put these artefacts on display, pull these things together, and actually uh, put them in a way that people can see and come and experience and get hands on? What, what does this really matter? Ultimately, we want people to trust God's word because we want people to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the creator, he is also the judge and sustainer, and wonderfully, he is also our saviour. Mm. 
Mm. Now, he saved people in the past and he's going to save people in the future and we want people to be part of that. We want people to come with us to the new heavens and the new earth when this Amen. earth passes away. But in the meantime, the evidence from this earth is all here for people to see with their own eyes. They can pick up and touch and see that God is the God of the real world and he is their God, their Lord and Saviour. Amen. And we are here and the ministry is here not to make creationists. No, We're there's no make point Christians. in making creationists. There are creationists who don't even believe in God. Amen. They just say that the universe was intelligent. We are. That's not going to help anybody. We want people to know the creator who is also their saviour. We're here to make disciples. We're here to spread the gospel. We're here to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And so the whole purpose of the ministry is a facilitating ministry. It's yes. there to help bring these things together, put them on display, show people that you can trust the world that God has created just as much as you can trust the word that God has created. Yes, and if you take the two of them together, it's a beautiful thing. So really we're here as a place to declare God's glory, to find yes, evidence indeed. for creation and there was flood to put it on display and to say hey there really is a god he really does care he really did create the whole world so he is really powerful and he not only has the right to judge he has promised he will judge and he has provided a way out through jesus christ so it's jesus christ who needs to be our lord and savior so diane it's been wonderful having you here we hope you're back again next oh, it's year it's been wonderful to be here i'm looking forward to coming back we'll see what the lord brings about. absolutely but do continue to support the ministry continue to follow us and who knows where we'll be by the time this episode goes out so uh, continue to seek us out continue to support us join us on more conventions and field trips that yes, we'll do indeed. come and visit us here at the creation research center pray for all of our staff as we continue to develop displays and if you're a church who is interested in hosting either a creation research talk or a seminar or even more if you're interested as a church or a group of churches in kind of hosting a creation research display maybe for a few months you'd like to have a creation evidence display put up in your church part of our vision is that we want to create displays and exhibitions that can travel around from church to church so it goes into a church for i know three or four months has some resources there as a facility for the local people to come and see the evidence and be able to discuss with people and then after a few months that exhibition moves on to another church and maybe a different one comes to take its place yes. because we can do living fossils for a few months mm -hmm. and then yes. dinosaurs different for a few things. months and mm -hmm. we carry on moving stuff around. Yes. So if mm -hmm. it's something that your church or a group of mm -hmm. churches in your area might be interested in, then uh, rally some support, get in touch with us and we'll see what can be done because we want this to be a facility for much further afield than just Oswald Street. Yes, indeed. For we the want whole it to go world, out. for the whole country, for yes. everybody to be able to see the evidence that Jesus Christ is not only our saviour, but also our sustainer and our creator. And to truly worship him, we need to get the full perspective of who he is from beginning to end. So thank you so much for joining us, Diane. It's been wonderful. Catch us next time, as I'm sure you'll be back over some time again and continue to support the ministry. But until then, we'll catch you next time.